According to Beethoven's friend and biographer, Anton Schindler, the character of Keys was Beethoven's favourite topic of conversation. You have the Harlequin dancing in D-flat major, he reports him as saying. I'm going to play it in D major. You say it doesn't matter whether a song is an F minor, E minor or G minor. I call that as nonsensical as saying that two times two are five. The reason I make Pizarro sing in harsh keys, even in G-sharp major, when he makes his heinous accusations of Florestan in his duet with Rocco, is to convey the nature of that individual. These keys give me the best colours with which to express his harsh character. As in the Baroque, classical composers based their ideas about the character of keys on two factors, the nature of the tonal system and the tuning of keyboard instruments. To modulate to a key a fifth higher in the cycle of fifths requires more effort than modulating to a key a fifth lower. As a result, it was felt that moving sharp-wise produces a sensation of striving, while moving flat-wise produces a sensation of resignation or yielding. This sensation was compounded by the tuning system. Despite the growing influence of equal temperament during the classical period, keyboard instruments continued to be tuned in mean tone temperament, well into the 19th century. Mean tone tuning was an irregular system which provided excellent fifths and beautiful thirds in those keys reasonably close to C major, but which became increasingly out of tune the more distant the key from that starting point. In it, every key was subtly but significantly different in tuning, so there was every reason to say they were also different in character. Most theorists of the time discussed the character of keys in general, but only one, Christian Schubart, supplied any details. Beethoven obtained a copy of the book in which they're listed when it was eventually published in 1806, and he held it in the highest regard. Schubert maintained that keys are either coloured or not coloured. Coloured keys fall into two groups. Those with sharps are hard, fierce and strong. Those with flats, soft and melancholy. The non-coloured keys are C major and A minor, the neutral keys, the keys without sharps or flats. These he calls innocent and simple. He then moves flat-wise, discussing each key in successive order. F major, D minor, B flat major, G minor, and so on. The remotest key he goes to is E flat minor, which he describes as expressing anxiety, fear, dread, the darkest melancholy, the deepest distress of the soul. He then proceeds to B major, the fiercest, most passionate of the keys, and completes his discussion with E minor. This is close to C major and takes on much of that key's innocence and simplicity. Schubert calls it naive, but being a minor key, it's tinged with sadness, suitable for an uncomplaining lament, he says, perfect for a woman's confession of love. The notion that each key has a specific character had its critics in Beethoven's time, just as it has today. One of the severest was Beethoven's friend, the composer Friedrich Kanner, a man Schindler called the very personification of scepticism. Kanner based his arguments on the alterations that orchestral pitch had undergone and as a final expedient on transposition. Beethoven, reports Schindler, based his counterclaim on his unfailing ability to recognise each key even if it were pitched a whole tone higher or lower than the ear was accustomed to hearing it, so that the transposition argument was no longer valid. In any case, it was irrelevant. For the centre of the tonal system has its place even though that place is movable. The orchestral pitch had been raised, but the difference was imperceptible because our feeling for the psyche of each key had risen along with it. 
Beethoven's argument rested on the assumption that mean tone temperament will retain its relationships even when transposed. But in his next remark, reported by Schindler, he suddenly changes tack. He claims that he has no difficulty in distinguishing C sharp major from D flat major, its enharmonic equivalent. On stringed instruments, these may be pitched and tuned slightly differently, but on keyboard instruments, they would be exactly the same. Beethoven's point is that the ear was only secondary in making the distinction. First of all comes the feeling for the subtle difference between hard and soft that are the characteristic features of these two keys. To illustrate the point, here is the end of Opus 131 in C-sharp major, followed by the opening of the slow movement of Opus 135 in D-flat major. This is played by strings rather than piano. But the difference between hard and soft is not only a matter of tuning, tempo or dynamics. Even though Beethoven held Schubert's descriptions of the character of keys in high regard, he wasn't wholly in agreement with them. He felt his ideas were only pertinent as far as piano music was concerned. In music for ensembles in which the temperament was not fixed, such as unaccompanied choral music, string quartet,